Hello everyone, today I will start work on my new lathe spindle. Before starting the build, I wanted to give some context on this small lathe by showing you this paper that I found online. Apparently this lathe was introduced in 1939, making it more than 80 years old. I am not certain about the price point of the lathe, although it seems to say 990 pounds, this would amount to over 50,000 pounds in today's money, which would seem unlikely. So if you know what this price format adds up to, please let me know in the comments. Although some things from the past are rightfully considered better than modern alternatives, bearings have definitely improved a lot. This lathe has bronze bushings that are worn out to the extent where I can measure half a millimeter or 20 thou of radial play in the spindle bearings. The perfect compromise for me is keeping the current spindle in the original condition and instead making a new spindle that makes the lathe much more enjoyable to use. Before designing the spindle, let me remove the old one. After removing the spindle, I can start taking some measurements and create a few sketches before taking it into a 3D CAD program. I designed the new spindle around two tapered roller bearings. When choosing which bearing I want to use, I usually use the online bearing catalog on the SKF website. I simply select the type of bearing I want to use and enter the dimensions that are critical to the design. In this case I want an inner diameter of 30mm. The website will then show all bearing numbers that fit the criteria and even provide 3D models of each bearing and the recommended fits for the axle and the bearing housing. These bearings do need a preload in order to remove almost all axial and radial play, providing that proper fits are maintained when machining the axle and bearing housing. I often see the same bearing setup in big hydraulic motors. When rebuilding these motors, we use a hydraulic press to apply a load and use some shims and a snap ring to achieve the desired bearing preload. A different option for setting a preload is using a fine pitch thread and a nut, as used in truck axles for example. I decided to go with the second option and try to cut a thread on the spindle axle and use a locking nut to set the preload. For the headstock I will be using some 20mm sheet metal that I decided to order at a laser cutting company as I know what kind of precision they can offer. The bearing housing and axle I will turn on the lathe that is available to me at the place I work. I know not everyone has simple access to a lathe, but if you really wanted to, you could get a similar result without using one, but that's not the subject of this video. On the bearing housing, I will start by cleaning the OD and turning an external shoulder for the fit up of the final weldment, as well as an internal shoulder for the tape roll bearings and seals. Once the first side is completed, I can flip the part in the 3D jolt chuck and do the same operations on the opposing side. After completing the lathe work on this part, 
I need to drill two holes for weld on sockets that I will use for an oil level gate and the filler cap. The next part I'm going to machine will be the axle. I'm starting off with a piece of hydraulic cylinder plunger rod. The way I designed the axle allows me to use the chrome layer of the plunger rod as the sealing surface for the front main seal. There are four features I need to turn. A face for mounting the drive pulley, a sealing surface for the rear seal, a thread for setting the bearing preload, and the bearing support surface. I have never done any single point thread cutting on the lathe, but I did a test piece and it turned out pretty good. The finished part did not turn out exactly as intended. It appears that the lathe I was using is turning a slight taper, which means that the bearing fit could be better. After the machining is completed, I can start welding. I think it would be best to make weld the headstock to minimize heat distortion, and although I have access to a MIG welding machine, I decided to do a proper test on my own TIG welder, to see how it holds up. Prior to welding, I let the laser cut plates soak in vinegar for a few days, so I can wipe off the mill scale in order to achieve a cleaner reference surface for welding.
After welding and assembly, this is the spindle itself finished, except for some paint. I still need to machine the spindle nose and chuck back plate, but I will save that for the next video. I also have another upgrade coming soon, which I actually did not plan to do when I started the spindle build. But here is a little sneak peek. This is it for today, please consider subscribing and stay tuned for the following videos on my lathe and milling machine.